supposed to leave Wednesday to head out here, and a bunch of buddies come over on Wednesday morning, and we thrashed to kind of just that last push to tidy everything up. We didn't leave till Friday and drove straight here. So uh, we left Friday night at man, 8 o'clock at night, and we were, uh, we were out here. We were in Barstow by about 2 in the morning. We, we drove nonstop. <laughs> it's been a ride. Basically, we showed up on the lake bed with a car with no shocks. We drove it just to make sure it worked, you know, make sure everything worked. Lined up for qualifying, and I, I told my co-driver, I said, let's go out for a Sunday cruise. Brand new car. I, it's similar geometry to the old car, but it's, it's smaller, it's lighter, um, way lower center of gravity. It handles so much better. Um, just went out and put down, I'm more than excited, it's insane to go out and, and we qualified fourth place for, for Friday's race. So I am pretty, pretty pumped. Don't want to jinx it, but first year we, we qualified by 14th or 15th, we finished right around there. Uh, last year we qualified seventh, we finished seventh. So, <clears throat> qualified fourth this year, so what we gotta do is catch one guy. Yeah, I, I want to be on that podium so bad, so bad, I'm this close. Oh yeah, they were, they were, everybody was watching. Oh yeah, I got my fiance's sisters were texting me, my fiance's dad was texting me, I got my mom and dad texting me, my sister, everybody, all my buddies, they're all shooting me messages and, and, and they're, they're, they're pretty impressed. When I was out pre-running the qualifying course, I blasted a rock, it bent the rim and didn't even cut the tire. And there's probably at least a handful of cars that came off, maybe 10 cars that came off that had at least a flat. Some guys had two flats. So, no, these things, they rock. Tomorrow, since we're good, we'll, we'll nut and bolt it. We'll do some pre-running tomorrow and, and do the last kind of shakedowns before, that we need to before we line up on Friday to go race. Four, three, two, one. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Not as well as expected. Um, Chase Capera rolled over in front of us and we had to restart. Okay. We couldn't ask for a better setup. Right, I know, we had a good run going. We did, we'll get it. We'll get it. Four, three, two, one. Go, 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 go. And that's always tough to get back in the groove again after you kind of were, you know, focused. We had a really smooth run going in the beginning, and the restart, yeah, we just didn't get as smooth. We took a couple weird bounces, and it, it kind of slowed us down uh, quite a bit, actually. We're going to pretty much do the same thing that we did last year. We ended up starting 40th last year, and we were third or fourth coming across the line physically after the first lap. That's our strategy again. We're just going to run them down in the desert, and... Uh, then hopefully this year we get a better rock, a rock lap. So last year we broke in the second rock trail. We're gonna try not to do that this year. I think that we've got that part or that component of our, our car figured out. So my goal is to keep Dan in the car the entire race. I hope we can do that. We just gotta keep tires on the car and then pick good lines so we don't have to winch. brought the car here this week it was a, basically a brand new untested car so we you know we had our little bugs and whatnot to work out one of which being our brand new motor was junk about five hours in so 
we uh, we that that was the first issue of the week. You know, we had to pull the motor. Uh, we had a small team that went back to the shop to get another motor, and uh, we slammed it back in. Finished it right before qualifying. We ran our qualifying run. So I laid down a super fast in what I felt like was really smooth run uh, for qualifying. I think we were sitting in third after our run and we were right before power hour. When the day was over, I think we were 11th. So really, really not that bad of a run at all. And it was, you know, I like to be in that 10 to 20th position starting on race day. It's, you know, you have enough dust out front to chase people, but you're not you know, the guy that everyone's chasing and you're not the guy driving through all the dust. So it's a pretty happy medium and that's really the, the spot I want to be on my day. Right off the get, um, we had issues with the motor. It wasn't running quite right, so we took it up to Josh West there. Found a broken coil wire to number seven, so we got that fixed, got it on the dyno, and then it just snowballed from there. You know, we, had, we lost that motor after the first day. Uh, we also realized that they sent us the wrong gears for the transfer case, so we had to uh, swap those out. Um, so really struggled uh, through the week just trying to get the right parts. Uh, we had to track down a motor, get that swapped out um, got it swapped out super proud of the team and guys like wasn't a whole lot of sleep going on and these guys were just cranking away uh, we got the motor swapped got it redynoed retuned um, headed to qualifying hopped in the car last second driving over here it's about three miles we made it halfway and the fuel pressure regulator decided didn't want to hold any fuel anymore so it actually started spraying gas in the engine compartment caught the car on fire so we didn't make the qualifying. We were able to get it out pretty quickly, minimal damage, but the car went back over and we started working on it again. Um, got it ready to go for race day. It was, a, it was a rough week, not a lot of sleep, but again, the guys just battled through and, and made it happen. You know, we started 36th and it was it was pretty clean. Turkey Cloud wasn't terrible. Um, actually making it through the rocks wasn't bad, but uh, you know, once we, once you got through the rocks, there was a, a ton of traffic up in there and it just, uh, it, there was no wind and the dust was a, a just a nightmare. It made it tough. We found, we tried to find some alternate lines through there, uh, trying to make some passes and get around guys where we could see some stuff. Engine started running funky where it would only like rev up the half throttle. Anything above that, backfiring and coughing. So like, well, we'll stop at pit one, check air filter, check the mass airflow field, you know, sensor and see what we can figure out. Got to pit one, tear the intake all apart, clean the mass airflow, clean the filter, put it all back together. 
fired up. It's running good. Take off out towards Kruger Buttes. We're not even 200 yards out of lap, out of pit one, and it started running like crap again. Picking off guys at half throttle as fast as we could go in second gear, catching guys, passing them all the way out to Kruger Buttes. Um, made some, we had made a heck of a time. We were out, out in the bushes, just blowing past people, trying to get back in front, and got to Kruger Buttes, and had to even put it in low range to get through Kruger Buttes. Car would barely even climb the rocks out there. It was pretty, it was very annoying because I can usually just pluck my right through in high range and drive out and away you go. We pop out of the backside of Cougar Buttes and we're clipping through the desert good. We get made some more passes, catching up. We come out of pit one, get back on kind of the high speed section heading back towards main, resolution and back door. And uh, we, we were running probably 80, 70, 80 mile an hour through some of that stuff, just cruising. Got to a couple of the dry lake beds, about race mile 82, I think it was. And we were doing about 70, hit a big G out and we went for a ride. So uh, the back of the car bucked. I think all four tires were off the ground, stuffed the front end of the ground, and then we we did about a 75 yard yard sale. A couple guys on dirt bikes, a couple uh, rangers were out there, and a couple course marshals. They came right over. And they're like, "You okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, why?" And they're like, "That was one heck of a crash." Cause we we landed and we're like, "Well, that kind of sucks." You're like, "We didn't didn't really feel that bad, but it it broke a link mount bolt, and we landed so hard on the driver's side it just ripped the tires right out of the wheels." And then when the front end stuffed into the ground, it smashed all the oil coolers and the grill and the winch. It just basically just punched all that stuff into the front of the car. So that was unfortunately the end of our day. Like at one point on the tracker, it showed us all the way up in the second. So we were we were passing people. You know, we were we were catching back up. You, you never know. So I just I like to say thanks to all my friends and family. Um, yeah, all my sponsors: East Coast Gear Supply, DI, Box, JKS, Mickey Thompson, Brannick. Um, Artec, PRP, Steinager, SNH Metal. Um, everybody who's helped me build the car, all my buddies that we thrashed on this thing. We built it in such a short period of time. Just to come out with no seat time and qualify for it. Just that was, it, it was huge. So it was, uh, sure. and we built a good car. Other than a couple small things, it didn't hurt the chassis or nothing. So my buddy Chris designed it and it held up extremely well. So a couple small little tube repairs, some oil coolers and a link bracket bolt and it's ready to go racing again. We got clean run pretty much through uh, through pit one. Uh, fought a ton of dust, made quite a few passes, I think, uh, going out to pit one. And then about two miles after that, the front passenger shock, the hose for the reservoir just blew off. Uh, so we just pumped all the oil and all the nitrogen and there was nothing left on that side. So that made the next 70 miles of desert super rough and significantly slower and off base. Mickey's were great. Uh, it was a relatively slow pace through the desert, uh, but had zero issues uh, anywhere in the desert, nowhere in the rocks, which is which is pretty amazing. Uh, we definitely pounded through some rocks, uh, you know, with no reverse. We definitely kind of hammered on them a little bit, trying to get them to bite, get them to grab, and and trying to work our way through it. So, uh, and kind of same thing in the desert. If we were off pace, but man, we took some hits. Uh, in the front that the tire took the brunt of because there was no compression whatsoever in that shock man it was just the springs and then the bottom which i think the tire probably took a fair amount of abuse doing that It was, Sledge was a parking lot, man. It, uh, we dumped down into it, thought we had a pretty good line going. Uh, we lost reverse somewhere out in the desert loop. Uh, we got into main pit where they changed the shock and had minimal reverse. Uh, and that just made every single rock trail that much harder. Um, you know, once we got into Sledge, I jumped out of the car way early on, uh, walked down and just started helping guys through that plaque line, getting over the over the rocks and down uh just trying to make up some time trying to there's there's one line through it there's the two boulders and how we got everybody through it was just going up and over both of them you stick 
a passenger, or excuse me, your driver tire high on the inside and pretty much everybody, you can just walk them, as long as the tires hold, you just walk them straight up and over, a little bit left, and then you just dive down to the right and you kind of pivot around that black rock and then you're kind of home free. made it over to Jack and you know with no reverse it you pull up to one spot and you catch the front diff on something on a rock you didn't see or whatever usually you can just throw it in a reverse quick back up a little bit move over a foot and you're usually home free but that wasn't how it worked yesterday I probably winched I don't know at, at least it felt like a hundred times I'm sure it was probably a, a solid 12 to 15 times just because of that uh, we made it up wrecking ball we actually ran into eric miller who helped uh winch us back uh, we were in a bad spot he winched us back a little bit we made it all the way up through wrecking ball and then uh down to the bottom of daydreams and that's that's kind of where we timed out uh we ran out of light ran out of time it just wasn't our day reverse and missing reverse just kind of killed it for us that was that was a tough break you know that's two years in a row that we've lost reverse so Try and figure out what's going on there. Thank you for letting us follow you out here, man. If there's anybody you wanted to, you know, give a shout out to, now's the time and we'll awesome. wrap this up. You know, obviously Mickey, uh, Yukon, Warren, uh, Wyotech back home in Laramie, they've been huge. TrendFab does a great job prepping the car. Everybody that makes it possible. My wife, uh, you know, she comes out and puts up with the dirt and the, and the cold and everything for the week. It's not possible without her coming out here. Um, Jeremy for the car and having me ride along sitting there screaming in his ear uh you know and it, it takes a crew everybody else that came out stan and sean and tracy and uh everybody that comes out and helps support it's huge you know good luck to chris tad jordan you guys are well prepped and ready to go so hopefully you guys kick some ass Good morning on Saturday. It is Ultra 4400 class King of the Hammers race today. I'm chasing with my boy Cord over here. What's up? We are headed out to Notches near Cougar Buttes to pick up Jordan Pellegrino. What's the temp today there, Cord, according to the old Jeep, dude? Well, it started at 18 and it seems to be rising into the early 20s. Oh, nice. So it's a, so. It's a comfortable 20 ish degrees this morning. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Frosty. It's frosty. Thank God for quartz heated PRP seats, man. Not only are they comfortable, but they sure are warm. Race day was just, it was just not my day this year. Uh, we started 95th out of 102, I think. So we're in the back. Watch that one. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got off to a good start. We came into a, what we call a danger zone, you know, so there's something that we really need to check up for, a little too hot. I had to really lock up the brakes and there was really bad braking bumps and it ended up breaking one of the stub shafts off of the front axle out of, out of the gearbox, the portal. 
I didn't have any spares. I used everything that I had on the car. I put the used ones, I bought brand, I two, uh, two brand new ones, put those in the rear, and I put the used ones in the front. The dust was miserable. I mean, I can't tell you how many times you literally couldn't see the hood of the car and you're trying to run 60 to 80 mile an hour. Uh, we did pretty well though. We, we think we picked off about 40 to 60 cars in the first lap. Um, ended up just driving over bushes, man, like through the desert next to the trail. We're running really smooth and, and got through that first lap pretty well. Uh, where's the car at, Bean? What's the status? Cars? You want to talk about it? Yeah, I want to talk about it. Come on, dude, tell me about it. Car's hurting my feelings right now. Okay, well, where's he at? Car is out in the middle of the desert. And when he comes in, we're going to have to do a uh, damage assessment. We had a little issue on the passenger front. So when he comes in, we're going to have to tear into that, see what kind of situation we're into, and see how we can fix it. I can't get Jordan. Somehow there was a box of like my original stub shafts and somehow they made it here and I found that box in the trailer. So what we ended up having to do at pit one was just pull that axle out. We threw it in the car with us. We drove it three wheel drive back here to main pit. We started ripping apart the portal. I ran here back to the trailer. I found that box because up until that point, we were out of the race. Like there was nothing we could have done. And I found that box and I was like, holy shit, we're back in it boys, let's go. And uh, we were back on our way. So, I mean, unfortunately that was still probably an hour, hour and a half pit uh, here at Maine before we even started lap two. So got that fixed, headed back out. Here? Yeah. You good with that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fine. That good? This will work. Okay. We'll figure it out from here, boys. Thank Just you very much. Radio. <sighs> yep. Uh, I went back at lap three, just before we got back to pit two. We lost the, uh, lost the ring opinion in the rear end. I think we worked our way all the way up to around 14th or 15th is the highest I think we got to. So, I mean, we were getting up in the mix there and unfortunately that's not something, not something we can fix. So we uh, hung out there for a little bit and just collected ourselves and picked our way out, you know, limped it back in 10 mile an hour. So I got to thank uh, my wife and kids for uh, putting up with me doing this sport. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of evenings and weekends to get the car ready. Um, friends and family too. I mean, countless hours, you know, both in the shop and out here on the lake bed, the other side of the country. Um, besides that, you know, all of our great partners, obviously Mickey Thompson, Raceline, uh, Off-Road Research, Amsoil, uh, Hawk Performance jumped on this year, Warren, Warren was great. We didn't really have to use him too much this year, but you gotta have him. So thanks to all those guys for making it happen and uh, appreciate their support. running another smooth lap up until Chocolate Thunder lap two and the other side broke.
never intend on rebuilding a portal in the middle of the desert. You know, that's just not even a thought. But when we broke that one on Chocolate Thunder, I'm like, dude, I have this one in the car. So when we left Maine, I had two in that box. We put one in and I'm like, we should just take this one with us just in case. And again, just in case is what happened and we needed it. So I'm like, all right, dude, let's try and take this thing apart. So here we are on the bottom of Chocolate Thunder, ripping our now driver portal apart. We got it in and somehow we did it in almost the same amount of time at the bottom of Chocolate Thunder with no tools that we did it in main pit with all the tools we could have needed. So that was pretty cool. We pulled into pit two after all that happened, our next opportunity to pit, we pulled in. Um, Cause again, we didn't have oil in the car. So we ran that portal dry. We reassembled it dry with sand in it and so everything. We, we didn't have fluid. We literally couldn't reseal the box. We couldn't put oil in it. I ran that thing as dry with sand in it. Cause again, we're in Chocolate Thunder rebuilding this thing. There is sand everywhere. So there's sand in this thing, no oil. So we pulled into two, we finished our four or five trails after that, pulled in, they pulled the tire off, filled it with oil, and uh, we were moving again. And we came back in, started lap three. By this point, it's dark. We were the last car to come through the start finish. Dave Cole pulled us, he stopped us at the start finish line and said, you guys are the last car on course. So, you know, be safe out there. And we're like, all right. Well, dudes, how we do today? It was a day. It was a freaking day. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely a day. For as unpredictable as it is, I think we did the best we could possibly do. You never know when they're going to get to a spot, how they're going to get to a spot, if they're still in the race. But it is fun being around with just chasing, you know? Yeah. Getting out here. Sure going from spot to spot. Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. It is a good time just being able to rip around out through here. Yeah. So that little dot straight out right there from my finger, Yeah. that's Jordan up there. That's Jordan? Yeah, yeah that's Jordan ah. on the top of Jack right now. What's he doing? Changing, changing the tire. The one flat we've gotten. Oh, good luck, Jordan. Race car is at 135 and all in the mail. For sure. Bit two, please come back to Maine. You are released. Base Super Val, did he just call it? Yeah, we, we got all the way to right on the other side of this hill right here on the lake bed and the trans quit. Yes, they called it the Ah, race mile 83, and we're out. Transmission. Last lap. The 2022 King of the Hammers. Copy that. If you want to come back to the tent and, uh, I don't know, soak with the rest of us. Can't say we didn't give it hell. We gave it everything we had. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just one of those days. It just was not our day this year. As always, you know, none of this would be possible without Jen Wright. Um, Yukon has been a big help this year. Mickey Thompson's been a big help this year. Torco has been a big help this year. Scotia has been a big help this year. You know, there's, there's a lot of people on the side of this car that it would absolutely not be possible without them. And uh, yeah, hats off to them and I couldn't appreciate each and every one of them enough.